Moves here on Kiwi. Well, um, happening this week is a an awards ceremony to um, to acknowledge the people pulling the the uh, strings behind the scenes in the New Zealand music industry. It's called the Music Managers Awards, taking place on Wednesday evening. All kinds of people are up for awards, including uh, the manager of that band that we were just listening to there, Opossum, uh, Paul McKessa, who also manages. The Naked and Famous, Lydia Cole, Brooke Fraser and Collapsing Cities. He's up for Manager of the Year and also International Achievement as well for uh, The Naked and Famous and Brooke Fraser. And he joins us on the line this morning. Good morning, Paul. Hey, man. How you doing? Very, very well. Thank you very much. Um, and I, I, take it, I take it you're in New Zealand at the moment, aren't you? I, I am, yeah. Pulling the, str- pulling the strings makes <laughs> me sound like a puppet master or something. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I am, I, I am in New Zealand. I was away last month with um, Naked and Famous who were finishing up um, an American tour and um, Brooke was playing in um, in Spain and Apostle were playing in London. Wow, all over the place. So I'd imagine the job yeah. job would um, take you overseas quite often. Yeah, it does. It does. You can't, you, um, like you, you, you spend, you spend a fair amount of time going away, going to meetings with people, record companies and your agents and, and publishers and whatnot, trying to drum things up and then, um, then there's, you know, there's a there's a period of time where you do you do spend time on the road with the band, but um, I'd say we we have um, we've always we've always employed um, proper tour managers because uh, you know there's a particular skill to to managing on a tour, running a tour and stuff, and um, I'm pretty hopeless at that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, band, bands wouldn't bands wouldn't catch planes <laughs> or uh, or get to gigs if I was left in charge. Wouldn't be good. <laughs> So, what kind of skills do you need as a music manager? Um, Crikey, you know, I don't know. It's like um, it's it's a it's a tricky thing to train for. I imagine I was um, I was lucky enough to spend a long time working in the music business before I moved into management, working in independent labels. Where I I kind of I think you pick up some of the same kind of skills that you do need, and that you've got to you know you've you've got to be able to to relate pretty well i think to to musicians mm. who um who who lead a, a unique kind of life mm-hmm. in, a, in, a, in their sort of creative world you've got to be able to relate to them but you've also got to be able to kind of like uh get you know there, there's an element of you know of helping them helping them get move, moving understanding how the business works and also being able to represent an artist's interests and in um you know in, in the wider music world where um, artists sometimes take a bit of a battering even though they're the, the kind of the, the central point of the whole thing. So quite a broad skill set really including I guess psychology in there as well. Yeah, yeah, I've got um I've got uh, I've got a couple of small children of my own which yeah. kind of kind of help, helps me with some of the um some of the quirks of the of the uh managing musicians thing. So is is that also tough um balancing the, the you know your work and personal life particularly with the overseas Travel almost that sort of rock and roll lifestyle, but um, having a family as well. Oh yeah, man. I would you know I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it's easy, but you know you just got to make sure that you know. I think in any job you work where you're away from your family, you've got to make sure that when you're there, you're totally there, mm. like I am right now, getting yeah. them out of breakfast, making make getting them out of bed, making them breakfast as I talk to you. And, and, and yeah, <laughs> annoying radio presenters ringing up <laughs> in oh. the morning. <laughs> What, what, it's, um, all the, it's all the kind of chaos we're used to. Yeah, here. yeah. What, what, um, what, what, what would you say were the biggest achievements um, uh, for you and your bands over the past um, year? Over, over the past year, mm. um, I, I think it's you know it has been a pretty exciting, a completely exciting year for Brock and the Naked and Famous, particularly. Mm. Um, Brock is a, an artist that we'd worked with for a long time, and. We had made some really good headway in a lot of places in the world, um, like Australia, where she was living, and, and we'd done quite well in America. But um, her record really blew up in Europe this year, last year. Um, Something in the Water was a big hit on the radio in a lot of places in Europe. Right. It really opened doors up for her. And, you know, in the, I just got in the post yesterday this, um, like a gold record from, um, from the record company in Germany. So, awesome. You know, it sold like, you know, the single sold, you know, I think that's a quarter of a million copies there. And the Naked and Famous as well, man. It's like um, Young Blood, Platinum in Australia. Um, that, song, that song's actually be a gold, a gold single in America in, wow. a, in a week's time, which is an amazing achievement. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't happen a lot for New Zealand artists. And the fact that we've been able to tour, um, 
you know, 24 countries on that record played to, um, you know, played to some some pretty big crowds. We're headlining sh- headlining shows in places like you know, LA, San Francisco, awesome. Toronto, and that mm. 3,000 people at a time. So um, you know, when when you're starting to when you're starting to do that, you know, we're not we're not unique. There are, there are a bunch of New Zealand bands kind of working to this level now, but it certainly is an amazing feeling. Sort of, it's sort of quietly happening overseas, isn't it? Out out of out of sight, and and we don't sort of hear about it so much here. Yeah, um, you know, I guess. Um, I guess you know he's just kind of getting on, getting on with the job, and yeah. you know, hope you know, hopefully, you know, I mean, I'm talking to you on the radio, so hopefully, people will be yeah. will be starting starting to hear about it. But um, you know, we yeah, we tend you know we tend to just be working, and um, mm. I don't know, you know, sitting around, sitting around tell tell everybody about your achievements. It's, uh, it's not always the New Zealand way, is it? So th- are those naked and famous kids going to, going to record another record anytime soon? Yeah, yeah, which um, it's like. We, we, the the tour I was on that fi- that finished um, a couple of weeks ago the um, the was the last tour we were doing we've got we've got three shows to do in California um, in early June and that's it we've um, given the crew the rest of the year off and um, the band are um, going to settle in and they have uh, they've made a start on writing but um, they've really got to get get stuck into it and um, you know, hopefully within a, you know, within a few months we're making a record. Yeah, all right. Well, um, Paul McKessa, here's to a um, another fantastic year of music management and success um, here and overseas, and uh, good luck for the awards this Wednesday evening. Yeah, man, thank you very much. Cheers. Paul McKessa, music manager um, of Collapsing Cities, Opossum, Lydia Coldbrook, Fraser, um, and, uh, and he's up for the International Achievement and Manager of the Year, and here is... One of those bands, Naked and Famous, with Punching in a Dream.